Nobody here has any illusions about how difficult this is going to be. The Taliban have been lodged in power for three years now, and the world has moved on. The UAE recognized the Taliban the other day. Nobody said there wasn't even a squeak about it. So that's really the first purpose of this conference, to draw the world's attention back to what's going on in Afghanistan, particularly the terrible situation of women. This was the first day of the conference. It was a day of a lot of determination, protest, discussion, and not a little emotion. She's singing of bitterness and of taboos, of all the pain of being an Afghan woman under the Taliban. But the chorus is a cry for action. Bread, work, freedom. The women here are trying to forge a united platform to present to the international community and with which they can pressure the Taliban. But three years on, I think a lot of people from outside are looking in and saying, well, the situation is hopeless. The Taliban are firmly in power. Give up. You might as well just live your life in exile because there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that's a um, uh, fair judgment to have um, uh, after seeing all these things, but uh, I still cry. <laughs> Um, no matter how many years, I will still cry. It's so, this wound is so, so deep and so fresh. I mean, like a country and millions of people is not something that you can give up on. So you don't... Tell yeah. anybody in advance no, where you're going? No, no, just my office. The yeah, last time I saw Farzana three years yeah. ago, she was visiting her constituents. At 29, she was one of Afghanistan's youngest MPs, representing her nomadic Kochi people. But after the Taliban returned to power, she, like most of the women here, fled into exile. You might have a life for yourself as a person, as a person a good life, a happy life, especially someone like in a young age, in exile, where, wherever you are, you just live and you settle. But you have all those, um, all those weights on your shoulders. In Kabul these days, you see very few women in the parks where families used to picnic together. Men fear the Taliban because they get punished if female family members aren't covered head to toe or speak too loudly. So it's easier just to insist they stay at home. The few women who managed to make it to the conference from Afghanistan can't reveal their identity because they want to go home. I can help by being a voice for the people who remain in Afghanistan. And we're doing a lot, especially with widows and orphans. I can listen to the younger generation and try to give them hope by reminding them that the first time the Taliban were in power, they were eventually thrown out. It will happen again. Slogans like no to gender apartheid in Afghanistan and no to the Taliban may seem empty. But just raising their voices is a gesture of hope and determination. And in a world distracted by other conflicts and crises, if these women don't, who will? One of the words I'm hearing a lot here at the moment is unity. And that is because Afghan women are divided, just as all people are divided, as Afghan men are divided, one of the problems is ethnic groups. You've got Pashtuns, you've got Hazaras, you've got Tajiks. And what the women here want to do is say, look, we are all Afghan women and we are all oppressed as a group. So let us try and forget all those other differences. And I think that that is one of the main things. Another issue on which there's a lot of disagreement is how to and whether to engage with the Taliban. Now, there are women here who, as you saw in the piece, are still living there. And there are women who are, I know one woman who's running a shelter 
for, for victims of domestic abuse. She feels it's really important to engage with the Taliban, to talk to them, to try and do that vital work. Others say, no, we shouldn't speak to them at all. We should completely shun them, and we should make sure that the world shuns them. But I think that in the end, everybody knows there's going to have to be some kind of compromise. This is just the start to make sure that the women's voices are heard when that day comes.